Today on BRS TV Investigates, we're going to start investigating the number one source of nutrition for our corals, light. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with the focus on putting them to the test. It's time to start our lighting test. Today we're going to share some ideas from the reef to reef community, discuss how that input shapes our future, and outline our testing approach for specific lights. Back in February, we started a reef to reef thread called Reef Tank Lights, What Would You Like to See? in hopes of getting to the bottom of what it is the community really wants to know about lighting. And we got all kinds of awesome ideas that spurred a lot of thought here at BRS. Tons of them relating to testing application of lighting and testing different theories, like Big Jim's suggestion of, I'd like to see a scientific test on blue versus white lighting and its impact on growth and color of SPS. Pete the Puma, I'm most curious about the interactions of various light sources, meaning how two radions work together rather than just one. 63409, are LEDs comparable to metal halide balls for growth and color on SPS? Hellfish, is it true that lower PAR enhances photosynthesis and growth? There seems to be an almost endless request for technical knowledge as well. These are reefers who have their own theories of what's best and just looking for real data on the light sources so they can select or tune the one that best fits their needs. Starting with Rex, who's asking for more information on cheap LEDs versus high-end LEDs. Happy Hour Hero, I want to see if LED lights that claim to hit certain wavelengths and chlorophyll peaks actually do. Dragon99, I'd love to see the PAR map and spectrum curve for every light you sell or have tested, maybe in some type of comparison tool. Sundog 101, I'd like to see how spread out fixtures like the Reef Breeders or Orphic compare against more condensed fixtures like Kessels or Radions. Fishly, I'd like to see PAR values for varying intensity ratings, for example, Radions at 30, 50, or 60, to get a better idea of actual use PAR. Rick 45 Cal, I want a straight up lighting throwdown. Put them all to this test, from ATI power modules down to the most economical offering you have and everything in between. There are also some longer term ideas like CARM 40's idea. I'd like to see the cost of unit versus energy uses versus photosynthesis. Useful idiot, I'd like to know if the spectrum shifts of LEDs over years of use or if the PAR drops. Nicholas Brown, I'd like to see the longevity of metal halide bulbs versus manufacturer recommended replacement intervals. JW Shiver, is there a performance difference between PAR output between regular T5 ballast and dimmable T5 ballast? This is probably both valuable in terms of immediate bulb performance, but also in long term measurement of the impact and bulb life from dimming. I'm pretty certain we can produce and share a wealth of technical knowledge on each light source with the reefing community. It might take a while to get through the entire lighting offering, but it's absolutely an achievable goal to gather information on the light sources and share actual performance data based on their intended use environment. However, putting popular spectrum, intensity, growth, and coloration theories to the test in a manner which produces definitive, accurate, and reproducible results is a whole different thing. Not only does this require a wealth of time and resources, but it needs to be done well because there's a high degree of responsibility in producing data the community is going to use to make decisions for their own tanks. I can tell you already that as excited as some experimentation moments are, there's 10 times as many disappointments as you learn that your few to several month test was implemented wrong, needs to be scrapped and restarted. Sharing partially accurate, leading or uncertain results can be even more irresponsible than sharing nothing at all. Acknowledging those challenges, the opportunity to evolve the conversation about lighting our reef tanks is impossible to ignore, so I think we have to do our best to put those popular concepts and theories to the test. Hopefully some of these experiments and results will provide the baseline for the next evolution, which is always achieved when a critical mass within the reefing community is also exploring these topics, both in discussion and application. So many of these tests are going to take three to six months to see the real results, so I hope that you follow along to see how this unfolds. In the meantime, we're going to start a full-scale evaluation of all the different lighting options out there, hopefully not only giving you the data you need to make the right decision for your tank, but also help tune and get the most of the lights you already own. Our goal is to build a uniform list of evaluation criteria we can use on all the available lighting options to make it easier to understand all of their unique offerings. How you use this data is closely tied to your personal desires for your tank and approach to reefing, but I think this will apply to most display tanks. 
end of the day, evaluating a light should be a lot easier than it may seem. There's really only three things that matter. Coral health, the corals and tank look awesome, and available features. And I think it's wise to weight them in that exact order. Lastly, these things should of course be weighted against their individual price points. The reason I say weight them in that exact order is simply because if the light can't provide adequate energy in a usable distribution pattern to support metabolic functions for proper health, growth, and reproduction, the light is basically useless and the rest doesn't matter. Right behind that, in the most basic terms, the primary reason most of us even own reef tanks is because we want to look at it. That means most of us want the light to make the corals, aquascape, and even fish look awesome on all fronts. Last is a slew of features like phone apps, mounting options, onboard controls, dimming, clouds, sun travel, brand recognition, and other elements which does matter to a lot of reefers, but if we're being honest with ourselves, should take a significant backseat to the first two priorities of keeping the tank healthy and looking awesome. I'll say historically, I think a lot of reefers have made decisions based off feature sets like phone app availability, but that's because it wasn't easy to make decisions based on the other two more important elements. We're hopeful BRS TV Investigates is going to forever change that by giving detailed data on all the related elements on each light source. Starting with coral health, within that three simple things, adequate PAR levels, PAR distribution, and spectrum of the light. If you get these three things right, you will be successful. Adequate PAR mean the PAR levels are high enough to support the coral's metabolic functions. To measure that, we're going to provide you with a 20-inch grid of PAR numbers in a 60-gallon, 24-inch cube with measurements taken at 6, 12, and 18 inches deep. We're taking the measurements with the light hung at the manufacturer's suggested heights underwater inside a glass tank with a painted black back because it most closely resembles the environment the light would actually be used in, making the data usable to the end user. Since so many of us are using adjustable LEDs, we're also going to show all the lights with all channels at 100%, all channels at 50%, and BRS suggested settings for an LPS and SPS tank. I think this will help hone in on not only the PAR the light is capable of, but also a bit more information on the settings. Right after that, we want to know more information about the distribution of that PAR, particularly in relation to avoiding significant hot spots, shadowing, and a better understanding of how the lights work together in a multiple lamp setup. Hot spots and related shadowing is likely one of the top issues SPS reefers have with coral mortality and undesirable growth patterns. To get a better idea of how the lights perform in this regard, we're going to take measurements in the 120 gallon 48 by 24 by 24 reef savvy tank Felix built for us. Chris Benner at Benner's Woodworking or Sticks and Stones Aquarium Cabinetry was also kind enough to make us an awesome stand for this tank as well. Since they were so kind in providing the tank and stand for this series, I told them I'd throw in a quick plug. They both obviously do awesome work. I'm going to do something I rarely do publicly and simply state I personally trust these guys. You've seen both of their work throughout the various series on BRS TV, and I know in each and every case, both Chris and Felix have their clients' best interests at heart, and they stand behind what they do. They're not the cheapest options out there, but if you want an awesome custom tank or stand, these guys are the only teams in my book. So that said, we're going to use the equipment they provided to measure multiple light sources in different configurations and report on the evenness of the lighting, meaning exploring the difference between having two, three, and four lighting modules in various configurations on a 20 by 40 inch grid, which should give you a pretty solid window into the PAR distribution, potential hotspots, shadowing, and again doing it at a depth of 6, 12, and 18 inches underwater. Related to spectrum, I think pretty much all of the lights that we'll test will have a spectrum that can support Coral's most basic needs. It's not all that complicated. All you really need is adequate blue spectrum. However, through BRS TV Investigates, I certainly hope to explore the benefits of a wider spectrum covering different ranges. I think most reefers certainly appreciate a wider spectrum offering with a light which represents options and flexibility, so we'll share the spectrum offering combined as well as each individual channel. That said, I'm not confident anyone knows definitively what's best, so I'm going to hold off on comments related to saying that one is better than another, just that a wider spectrum represents more options. As relates to coral health, the primary element that we're going to look at 
is spectrum blending. Meaning how do the individual light sources combine into a single cohesive spectrum rather than flashes of an unevenly distributed spectrum? With a single source of light like a halide bulb, the spectrum is going to be evenly distributed. With many common LED implementations, all of the individual LEDs are emitting a fairly narrow spectrum and we're combining a variety of different LED types in hopes of blending them into a single unified spectrum. Some of the lights on the market do that very well and all of the individual spectrums are properly blended. However, some LED configurations create some pretty significant spectrum hotspots in certain areas of the tank, and rather than blend the spectrums together, they disco ball or flash the corals with individual spectrums. The human eye is one of the worst measurement tools out there, so if you can visually see the individual spectrum shooting around the tank, you can be pretty certain the spectrum blending is less than ideal. We're going to test the lights by taking a nine point spectrum measurement at the bottom of a 24 inch cube with a still surface. This should give a pretty fair representation of how well the LED's distribution, color ratio, placement and related lenses work together to evenly blend the individual spectrums and avoid spectrum hotspots where blue, red, green or yellow spectrums spike disproportionately. Related to that, we'll also add surface agitation with a power head, which should redirect the light around the tank and then take nine static measurements in the center of the tank where the blending should be best. I think the results are going to be pretty interesting and almost certain to stir up some debate as to how critical it is that the individual spectrums and related photons are evenly blended and distributed to different areas of the tank. End of the day, the reefing community doesn't know the answer to that question yet, but if you don't think it's important, in the same breath you basically have to say spectrum itself is barely worth talking about as long as it has some of the important ranges, which doesn't seem to be the thought process that most of the reefing community has today. That said, I'm pretty confident that given the option, most reefers would absolutely prefer that they were blended reasonably well into a cohesive light source, and I'm 100% confident they'd like to avoid the worst options out there that are very likely producing associated coral health, coloration, and growth pattern issues, which are hard to identify without this knowledge. Moving on to the next big category, coral and tank visual appeal. Again, we want the corals and tank to look awesome, and this is really at the heart of why we even own reef tanks. We want to look at it, and we want to share how awesome it looks with others. This consists of a wide range of elements, including coral coloration or pop, shimmer, contrast, visual effects like dimming, sunrise and sunset, lunar lights, clouds, and physical appeal of the light itself, probably ranked in that order for a lot of reefers. The biggest impact here is concerns the coral coloration and pop is absolutely going to be spectrum again. This is impacted in two ways. One, the wider the spectrum, more options you have for color, the more likely that you're going to be able to light the corals in a way that you find visually appealing. All of us have our favorite shade of blue, and each coral tends to look best in slightly different spectrums. Beyond that, the corals themselves respond to various spectrums differently and will actually morph the color of the coral in many cases in response to the spectrum change. End of story, most reefers will want a wider array of spectrums and control over them for these reasons. Right behind that is shimmer. When the shimmer is perfect, it gives a tank a sense of movement and brings it alive. Done poorly, it can add so much shimmer that the tank looks like a disco ball of sparkle and color, all the way to what I would call a TV static effect and really undesirable flicker. On the opposite side of that is no shimmer at all from fluorescent options. I would say the flat image that these diffused light sources produce ends up looking like a painting of a tank in your home rather than a real section of a living reef. Related to that is contrast. I would call this a somewhat more advanced consideration because most people don't think about it. But a single point of light like halides and LEDs produce a mixture of bright, dark, and shaded areas in the tank, which provides a sense of depth and a visually interesting image, where a highly diffused light like T5s produces very flat looking images with limited shadows or sense of depth. Historically, I think the blend of a high contrast single point of light like a halide combined with a diffused light like T5s met the coral health needs of getting the light all over the tank but still maintaining a high contrast image with depth and interest combined with a muted shimmer most people would say is awesome. All in all, I think the T5 halide hybrid approach to lighting is going to be the standard to beat on many different fronts knowing full well that most people would prefer to achieve the same results with the benefits associated to LEDs. 
Many of those benefits directly related to the desirable effects like dimming, spectrum, and intensity zoning, sunrise and sunset, or traveling sun effects, storms, lunar lights. All of these can be visually awesome effects as well, which make the corals and tank look cooler, so we'll cover the capability of each of these lights in this regard as well. A good portion of reefers actually care about the form factor and visual appeal of the light itself as well. Usually this is secondary to performance, but if the playing field is even, I would like the one that makes the outside of the tank look as nice as the inside. More or less, some reefers are probably okay with a high performance light that comes in a less appealing form factor with tons of cords spouting all over in every direction, and others want form to match function. In either case, we'll show you exactly what they look like mounted on the reef savvy tank in a 24 inch cube. The team over at Living Color Aquariums built us a coral insert for both tanks so you can get a window into what it will look like lit up on a reef tank. They provided something similar for us in the past for other lighting tests, which was awesome as well. I know most of you that are watching this are reef tank owners, but if you ever consider a fish only or aggressive system, the team at Living Color absolutely produces some of the best custom insert designs, and rather than some mass market imported products, they're custom making each one at their own facility. I think it'll be kind of fun to see how all of these different lights and form factors look with the inserts in the reef savvy tank. The third consideration we'll cover with each light is feature set, meaning mounting options, on and off board controllability, build quality, controller compatibility, geographic or lunar simulations, quiet operation, intuitive modes likely to result in success, and energy efficient design. The only one that I would call critical in this features list is mounting options because this can certainly identify or eliminate a lot of options for many reefers. Rest of it, to some degree, is just a list of nice or fun to have items that most people wouldn't make significant performance sacrifices for. We'll absolutely review each of these lights for all of these elements to help build a perception of performance and quality. This is where that final piece comes in, price. Price is a difficult thing to review because it isn't universal Everyone watching this video has a different budget and list of desires so there isn't a right answer, but I do think we can identify what I would call value, which is a good mix of performance and features at any particular price point. I think in general, most of us fall into one of three different categories. I want the lowest cost option out there that works. I'm willing to pay more for additional features if they present value to me, and I want the best option out there. Money is no object. My general pulse in the hobby is a vast majority of today's reefers find themselves in the middle and they are willing to pay somewhat more for performance and features as long as they're legit and produce the desired results. So in that spirit, we will do our best to give our perception of value on the light based on the tested features related presumed results and price point. Open and honest, you probably won't see many huge failures here because we already perform this type of analysis when we decide what lights we want to provide on the site and do our best to not stock low value items. But I think we will test some new lights that we don't sell as well as long as they're of high interest to the reefing community. I sure hope all of you are as excited as us to start down this path, not only in the equipment, but also some actual tests on corals. I still think we're about a month out on developing and implementing the coral test, but by late fall, I think we'll start to see some results we can share. Now it's time to start honing in on the details of those tests and sharing which lights you would like to see tested first. The best place to do that is absolutely on a reef to reef thread pinned down below. The finance department here is starting to mean mug me lately because I'm like a million miles over budget on BRS TV Investigates. So do me a favor and let them know with a quick thumbs up that you value what we're doing here and subscribe to see more. See you next Friday with another BRS TV Investigates.